So, to do lists, um, let's see. First things first, let's clean up this. So the reason why I wear contacts and not my glasses is because those are Warby Parker glasses that I got in 2011, 2012, and I haven't changed the prescription on them, so they're really bad. And also, I don't like having this kind of like outline in my periphery when I'm painting or drawing. Um, and also I have the Asian nose, so like my glasses just keep falling down and it's a struggle. So contacts it is, little hair product just to fix it, but unfortunately I can't fix this. This is gonna stay with me today. I was gone all of last week, I was in DC. I'd never been before. Uh, Madeline and I got to explore the city. We spent an entire day visiting all the monuments and walking around and I think we did about 12 miles, it was pretty crazy. But it was uh, a week away from the studio, which for me was like, I gotta get back. Now I'm trying to find my rhythm again. Every time I take a break from art, it always takes me a second to warm back up. And yesterday was really, really a struggle, I would say. Um, I was not very productive. I managed to like start gessoing these pieces and I did ship out like four, four things. So I had to like package and wrap all of them and that's like a process. And I did like add a couple few touches on a painting, but honestly, uh, out of the day, maybe got like a solid five hours of productivity. The rest was kind of just like wasted moping around. So today is a new day, it's a fresh day, it's sunny, it's freezing as always, but it's sunny, so I'll take that. And um, I'm gonna write out the to-do list and drink some coffee. I don't like to do brand Sponsors, sponsor, sponsor, sponsorships. Um, I don't like to do brand sponsors because I, first off, don't have any. Um, second off, I don't have any. But I went to DC and there's an Aesop store there and it is winter and my hands have never been so dry. Like I didn't know that my body could create dandruff that the way that it has. Oh well. So what did I get? I got resurrection aromatic hand balm oh my god this stuff my hands are so cracked and dry and my knuckles are like hating me right now but um this stuff is like butter it's just like more butter please so that's how i'm gonna start this video <laughs> so i don't usually vlog things i kind of just don't do videos, I just do pictures and upload to Instagram and I'm like, cool, I was productive and I did some marketing or I did some like sharing. Um, but I don't really give an inside scoop to like what my day to day looks like and how much actual time or energy I spend on art. People think that, you know, sometimes it's like really glamorous and glorious and quite frankly, a lot of it's just like uphill grinding and just like struggling and like pulling out your fingernails or like ripping your hair out. But then there's these moments of flow where you just like disconnect and you're just like completely wrapped up in the work and because you're so enthralled and so obsessed and so addicted to the practice of making art, it feels really natural and it feels really right. And when you're in that state, you can't really put your finger on it. It's almost like inexplicable. But I found that painting is the one thing for me that I, I really found like my voice in expressing myself and in telling stories visually that I not only enjoy telling, but also enjoy looking back at and seeing these little different parts of my life where I would work on certain art inspired by whatever was going on in my, in my current state. So as I look back on like my trajectory and like my style, it's evolved over time. The subject matter has changed, the colors have changed, the inspiration, you know, the vision, the, the, the story behind it. So right now I'm kind of, I'm kind of in a state of like uncertainty. There's a lot of changes happening. Um, you know, I went from California, I moved across the country to Rochester, New York. I uh, went from like sunny California to cold winter upstate. Um, yeah, <laughs> speechless. Cold weather is not a good look for me. It's just not a good look. Anyway, um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all or whatever. 
It's not all that bad. It's just, I'm not made for the cold. And I realize that now, unless there's some winter sports involved, like skiing or sledding or I don't know, outdoorsy stuff, being cooped up inside, it's enough to make me go crazy. The new year was a big change for me, like a big shift. I decided that I was tired of being tired. I was tired of feeling down on myself. I, you know, it didn't matter that I wasn't inspired. It doesn't justify me not working on my passion. It's something that has to be, you know, self-made. I can't wait for inspiration to hit. I have to create it for myself. So uh, just getting through that art block was a big step for me. And even then I still kind of like go back and forth with, you know, feeling up and excited about it and also feeling down and not inspired. Yesterday was a perfect example of being depressed all day and just complaining and whining and being a big baby. So today is a new day and I'm gonna try and go in a different direction. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be documenting it. So this is gonna be maybe a little bit longer video than most. So now is the day to get it all done. So let's get started, folks. Look how clean and organized my desk looks. Duh. Now that I've anxiously cleaned up the studio, it's time to write that to-do list. Check out my moleskin journal. I'm obsessed with moleskin. I filled out, I don't know how many of these. I even made a YouTube video about it. I think it was like my first YouTube video ever. Anyway, uh, these are some cute stickers. I really feel like this embodies everything that I am and will ever be. Um, my girlfriend's mom got me this Bob Ross <laughs> sticker. I thought it was kind of cute. And this is from Japan. Um, I spent my entire life with people doing that uh, because I had these like big face and cute cheeks. And so people just, you know, would grab my face. That's the first thing they do. So to-do list. Let's get it. Um, I write almost exclusively with uh, micron pens. I like the thicker um, line points. That's my preference, but honestly, I dabble. was to gesso these panels or add another layer. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind in terms of like what I was doing in that little time lapse. Um, first off, I made a mistake. I added too much water to the gesso. I figured I could just add water to the container because it was pretty low in it. Two shots of vodka. Usually I put the gesso into another separate container and add water until I get this kind of like lotion-y consistency. That's the consistency that I like. Um, because then I can apply the gesso with a very soft brush to avoid getting these lines. My whole goal is to get this really nice smooth surface. Unfortunately, I added too much water. Now it feels like watercolor that I'm applying to it instead of like a thick lotion like I wanted. Good thing is you always put tarp on the ground because uh, I did spill a little bit, so I got to wipe it off the surface of the wood before it dried. Um, I have some napkins just in case I need to wipe off my brush. Also, try and be in a dust or hair-free environment. <laughs> Usually I put a hat on, but I just forgot. Um, so like sometimes the hair would fall into the canvas and I'd have to like remove it and then, you know, kind of smooth the surface again. Also, it dries pretty quickly, so I clean my brush as quickly as I could. And I don't do it in extremely hot water because the brush bristles will get all kind of messed up, especially where it's all glued together. I usually run it under warm water and then I'll use some dish soap and then that will clean the brush fully. So one item on my to-do list is finally done. So one of the things on my list was to edit my online store. So I decided to take some photos of my latest painting, edit it, and upload it to my Squarespace uh, website. So here it is, up online and ready for someone to take it home. Part of being an artist is marketing. It's talking about your process, it's documenting your practice, it's you know telling other people what it is you're all about and sharing the experience of making it or you know what inspired the making of the art um, and 
Also putting that art in front of people, whether in a physical location like a coffee shop or a store or yeah, a gallery space or the internet where my internet friends live. Um, so yeah, I just did an Instagram live. I haven't done, I hadn't done one of those in a long time, so it was long overdue. I was really nervous and sweating and broke out in hives a little bit and I have sweaty pits now because of it. Might be oversharing, but hey, there are worse things in life. Everybody sweats, it's okay. Um, so this piece was one that I talked about on the Instagram Live, I like showed it. I was like, hey, this is for sale because it is for sale. Um, it's not like, hey, putting this in everyone's face and forcing it down their throat. It's more like an offering like, this is what I made today. If you want it, it's for sale, like that. And I think when people feel that, they appreciate that kind of energy. So I never try to like, you know, use my platform as a way to like push sales. It's more like, this is what I'm excited about. This is what I'm interested in. If you want to be a part of it, then tag along. And I think that's why people subscribe or that's why people follow me on Instagram. And if they don't, they just unsubscribe or unfollow and there's no hard feelings. <laughs> so I did Instagram Live, answered some questions about what it's like to be an emerging artist. Um, you know, one was talking about like, how do you create a collection or a series? Like how do you create something that shows an underlying narrative and tells a story? What advice do you give to storytelling through your work? Yeah, so I wrote, I did a YouTube video called uh, creating a collection, which is like working in series. When you're telling a story, when there's an underlying narrative, you want to have a variety in terms of what you're showcasing, but the color palette, the tones, the depth, the story, you know, the characters, there has to be something that brings them all together where someone were to look at the painting, they'd say, oh, this is clearly, and then blank fill in the name of the artist. Um, you know, either you, use a similar color palette, either use similar angles, or you tell a story like a graphic novel or like a like a collage where you can like show different things happening, you know, following a certain character or a certain theme. Um, there's a lot of options you have. Um, you can have like a showstopper piece that kind of like stands out from the rest and then the other ones kind of just all tie together. Uh, just depends on what you want to do. Um, you can always do like the same style of you know, same size canvas, just to keep it nice and unified. Uh, it also depends on what kind of space you're showcasing in, because I feel like the art influences the space and the interior almost as much as the interior inspires the, the art. Like when I'm painting a piece, of, a piece of art, I'm always thinking about what kind of, you know, place will it be living in long term? Will it be living in more of a gallery space that's like white walls? Is it gonna be more like a home feel, which has a lot of like wood and different textures and fabrics and colors? You know, how will this fit into that kind of room? You know, depending on how people buy art, sometimes people think like, oh, I have this really nice green rug. This painting will match my green rug. Like, they're not thinking the same way that you're thinking while you're painting. It's more about like what would fit their aesthetic or what would fit the story that their house tells or their space tells. Um, kind of think about how your art influences a room and how your art influences the other art in the room as well. So I did some online shopping and I got some books uh, and I decided to post about it on Instagram, which was something that I don't really do very often, but these are all books that I found really interesting and compelling. And so I thought, let's share it. Let's talk about it. Um, Disrupted Realism. I watched this video online uh, from John Seed and he was talking about how he kind of fell upon this unified theme that a lot of art uh, that he was looking at was following and it wasn't quite surrealism it wasn't quite contemporary or modern it was just this like whole other category and he called it disrupted realism and he made this beautiful book that has these you know interviews has these awesome descriptions um kind of like articles and little setups of, you know, the background of each of the artists. And it features 38 artists um, from across the States, um, maybe even the globe. And the, the work in here is really the art that I love. It's the art that compels me or inspires me. A lot of these artists I've been following already online and a lot of them I follow now because of this book. Um, 
I'm always actively seeking out art, uh, whether it's physically in museums or gallery spaces, but also online and in art books. So if you haven't already, please get your hands on uh, one of John Seed's books. So this is one of my favorite art books, actually, and one of my, a very smart purchase that I made. It's a little bit pricey, but worth every penny, I assure you that. If you wanna get one, I'll put a link in the description. Another one is Soroya y el mar, and the ocean, and the sea. Soroya is a Spanish painter. I came across one of his art books at Barnes and Noble, and it was like a really expensive art book, and I was like, I can't afford a $75 book right now. I mean, I can, but do I want to? Probably, I'll probably buy that book later. Um, but this is a small condensed version of his ocean pieces and his ocean inspired pieces. Um, I really like his brushwork. It's so different from my own and quite frankly, I want to copy it. So I was like, what better way to look at art than having it right in the palm of your hands. Yes, I could do it on the screen. Yes, I could do it, you know, digitally on my phone, but sometimes just having a book next to you, it just feels different. Um, I'm very analog. I wish I could do a Kindle, but I just can't. I can't do it yet. I like double dog earing the corners and I like underlying them and I like ripping them and spilling coffee on it and not really behaving well when it comes to taking care of my books. Sorry, mom and dad. But I do love books. And so this one was a purchase that I made and I'm very happy with it. I think it was only like 12 bucks. I was like, what a steal. And then this one, Creative Calling by Chase Jarvis. Chase Jarvis is like one of those guys that is really someone I look up to in so many ways. Like his, his background of, you know, going to college and studying something that wasn't necessarily what he wanted to study or, you know, the direction that he wanted to go in and realizing that like philosophy was actually something that is quite apl applicable to life. Like you can't really get a degree in philosophy and get a job but i think studying philosophy and how you think and better understand yourself and others really does help you navigate life and i think he really applied his philosophy um, his like philosophy inspired classes to how he approaches his craft which is photography um, but then he like branched out he wasn't like oh i found photography i'm gonna stop here he was like I know what I'll do, I'll like create an app and like I'll start talking about the process of how I take photos and how I land gigs and how I make a living from making, um, you know, making work and from collaborating with brands. And he created this, you know, YouTube channel that in interviews these amazing creatives from all around the world. And um, one of his series was called Creative Genius and he interviewed like 30 people over 30, um, and he shared it over 30 days. And these are all thought leaders, entrepreneurs, creatives, artists, photographers, musicians, and they're all so talented. And to be able to listen to these interviews while I'm painting, like so many of those interviews helped me create art as a result of just being inspired from those conversations. And he made that happen, like he curated that experience. So when he came out with a book that is all about creativity, I was like, I, I got you, like I'm getting one and I'm gonna tell everybody that I know about this book because he deserves the moon and beyond. So yeah, I've recently started this book. I haven't finished it yet. I'm like about halfway through, but I always dabble between books. I'll like start one, you know, have another one going. Like I was just reading uh, The Goldfinch and I finished it. And so I was like, okay, I'll take a break um, from novels and I'll switch over to something a little bit more on the personal development side. So I shared a post on Instagram about it and he reposted it. So I was like, Chase, I love you. Um, so yeah, so I did, I did some art sharing. You gotta support your fellow creatives. Um, so many people support me, so many people buy my work, share my work, talk about my work, follow my work, you know, not only do they send likes, but they ask questions and post comments and you know, they're really involved in my life. And so I feel like whenever someone who you appreciate or love is around you, or even someone that you like and admire, if you can support them uh, the best way you can, sometimes that just means buying their book. So thanks, Chase.
So I'm just doing a little check in with the vlog for today. Um, wow, uh, I just painted this. Looks good so far, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's the base coat, so it's not meant to be too detailed. It's just supposed to have the basic structure, the color, the kind of composition, the feel. And after the first few hours, I have a good idea of whether or not it's going to be a solid piece or if it's, you know, going to work out or if I should just scrape it or put it away. Uh, but yeah, I've been painting for the last two hours and I feel really good about it. I feel like I'm going in the right direction. I'm working with colors I haven't really used before, so it's interesting. I'm working with a lot of black and what happens when I use black and I put a color next to it and I blend, it muddies and so I have to be careful with how much paint I apply and not to blend too much. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that and call it a night with painting. I'm really digging these like greens and pinks together and this kind of like aqua white, off white yellow. That's the color I used in the sky and then some of those buildings have a little bit of that green and then some of the reflection of the, the furniture here. Uh, and then that pink soft hue in her, um, in Madeline's uh, nightgown is pretty freaking sweet. I'm digging it. I feel it. I'm feeling myself today. <laughs> and these are just some pieces that I've kind of abandoned for now. When the inspiration will strike, I'll know what to do. But until then, you're on hold, buddy. <laughs> No. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> You're so awkward. Shut up. You get nervous in front of the camera. I'm so camera shy. Oh my oh god. But look at those nails. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Where are we at with the to-do list? Clean the studio. Check, even though it looks like a mess now. Gessoed panels. Third coat. Actually, did four coats. So check, start 24 inch circle round, check. 
upload marketing for eight inch round wave piece, check. Email follow-up, check. Send an email, edit YouTube video. I started it earlier today, so I'm gonna put a baby check. Uh, <laughs> read and write for an hour. I'm gonna try and do that before bed. Organize week plan, I have not done that. Vlog, I've been vlogging all day, baby. Let's give it a triple check. IG Live, hell yes. Varnish Circle Round Piece and Madeline. I'm gonna give you a check. So right now, I just need to work on this one, this one, and this one. So I still need to edit the YouTube video. I need to read and write for an hour. I need to organize a week plan. Bobo gets his rosé cider as a treat. <laughs> as a treat. <laughs> You look like a baby. It's so yummy. <laughs> Go with the day. It's 12.15 and I finally finished with my to-do list. It only took from 9 a.m. till now to get it all done. Although I did have a little lunch break, had a sandwich. Um, I did take a break this afternoon as well for a little bit. And I did have dinner and watch some YouTube videos after 10 o'clock with Madeline. So overall, a very productive day. If you've survived this long, um, you must really like me or find me interesting or fun, which I find very surprising, but I'm very humbled. Um, otherwise, I'm just talking to myself and this is a weird vlog. But um, Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for being a part of the journey. Uh, I'm not really used to doing this much video content. I'm not used to like filming myself talk and just speaking into the camera. Uh, I've done it in the past a little bit, but today was like full on. I definitely checked in, you know, after every to-do list item um, and just kind of talked about my process and talked about what it was I was doing. And it was it was a journey. It's kind of like a day in the life of an artist, I would say. Um, but yeah, if you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, follow me on Instagram at Bobby Frank. Otherwise, you can uh, find my work or my uh, stuff online on my online shop, which is at bobbernierfrank.com. Um, and yeah, I think that should be it. Thanks again for joining. Thanks again for, you know, tagging along on this journey. And I'll see you in the next one.